Welcome to Nexus. I'm Wanda Allen Abraha, the Director of the Human Relations Department. We are excited to have the opportunity to bring you today's program. The Human Relations Department enforces and encourages fair treatment and equal rights for the citizens of the City of Winston-Salem. The Human Relations Department has three key areas of responsibility. They are investigating housing discrimination based on race, color, national origin, religion, disability, family status, and gender, mediating landlord-tenant complaints, and conducting cultural diversity education and inclusion training and outreach. This program is a part of our education and outreach efforts. All Nexus television programs feature community partners. During this episode, we will focus on our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Helping Hands Day with Amanda Massey from the Budget and Evaluation Office, and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Young Dreamers Award with Dr. Sita Samora from the Human Relations Commission. Now let's join Adolfo Briseño of our staff who will interview today's guests. Well, thank you, Wanda. And thank you all for being with us in another edition of Nexus. And in this, uh, in this first segment of Nexus, we have with us Amanda Massey. Amanda is, uh, works at the budget office here at the city of Winston-Salem. And she is one of the volunteers um, that last year participated in, in MLK Helping Hands, which is in the first segment of Nexus. We're going to be talking about that program. Tell us a little bit about what is MLK Helping Hands, Amanda. Well, it's the Martin Luther King Jr. Helping Hands Day. It was an initiative that was started by the Human Relations Department, Mayor Pro Tem Burke, and the City Manager's Office. What it does, it allows city employees to take a part of their work day and go out and volunteer in the community at nonprofit organizations, with nonprofit organizations. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about your, your experience. Last year was the very first year that we implemented this program. What do you remember from that, that participation? It was a great day. Uh, I had the opportunity to volunteer at the Salvation Army store on Peters Creek Parkway mm -hmm. uh, with fellow coworkers. Some I knew, some I mm -hmm. met for the very first time. Mm -hmm. We got to clean the store, help with the inventory. We assisted mm -hmm. customers. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, it was about 200 employees overall that volunteered mm -hmm. uh, with 12 different nonprofit organizations. Okay, so not only where you were, but 200 all 200, over, no. 200 city employees. And I must add that it wasn't just frontline employees. It was laborers all the way to directors that volunteered. I'm looking forward to next year to us exceeding that number. Look at that. Are you going to participate in the same uh, place in the Salvation Army or in a different, a different um, one? Wherever I'm needed. I'm looking forward to uh, maybe volunteering at a school this year because I like working with the kids. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Now tell us, Amanda, why do you think it is important for the city employees to participate in this, in this program in the community? Okay. Um, First of all, as city employees, we serve every day on our jobs. We serve our community every day on our jobs. But when we actually go out into community and volunteer, I think it confirms that we want to serve. Mm -hmm. And then we go out and volunteer. We become servant leaders because we're leading by example. And then it shows that our vision of wanting to promote uh, a community that is vital, it makes a vision come to life. And Dr. Martin Luther King, he was a great orator. And one of his quotes that's enduring to my heart is when he said that everybody can be great because anybody can serve. So when we go out and serve, we, um, we make his dream come to life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And also that um, we become who he was and we become who he is by uh, serving and it makes our organization great when we go out and serve and w it keeps his vision alive as well. Yes, and I think it, it also aligns with the um, with the vision of the city of Winston-Salem which yes. is to, to serve the, the, um, the citizens of Winston-Salem exactly. first. Now for those who have not participated in, in, this, in this program and we'll have an opportunity this mm -hmm. coming January, what kind of message do you have for them? I would say you're doing your own self a disservice by not serving because it, um, it gives you great joy to help someone in the community. 
to who may not, cannot help themselves. So go out and serve on that day. Don't stay at home or don't help someone in the community. Go out and help and serve. Thank you very much, Amanda. And just a reminder, this is going to be on Friday before the MLK holiday. It's January 13, where you, when, when the people, the community will see city employees serving, sometimes in the, in the back office, you know, it's not always visible, mm -hmm. but sometimes people will see city employees serving the community with nonprofit organizations to, to honor uh, Martin Luther King Jr. in a very, very hands-on way, which is by serving in a very, uh, you know, with your labor, you know, yes. physically in there. Um, well, thank you very much, Amanda, for, for being with us, and thank you for staying with us. We'll be right back with our next uh, uh, guest in, in the second segment of Nexus. and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart is a sea race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Well, thank you, and thank you for still being with us. In the next segment of Nexus, our guest is Sita Somara. Thank you, Sita, for being with us. Sita mm -hmm. is a Human Relations Commissioner. And today, Sita will talk with us about the MLK Young Dreamers Award, which is an award that we have been uh, uh, giving to young folks in the community that uh, do something in their lives or in their mm -hmm. professional lives yes. to emulate the, uh, the teachings of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, Sita, t t tell me a little bit about this award. Uh. Uh, this award was uh, started eight years ago uh, to as a form of recognition to emulate the uh, vision of Dr. Martin Luther King. So this is awarded for the people who go above and beyond their call of duty to serve the community, either um, by caring for the people mm -hmm. who are um, having less resources or fewer mm -hmm. resources or who are at disadvantage. So we, um, Human Relation Commission, has um, made a point to recognize these people, mm -hmm. to award them and recognize them for their contribution to the society. Wonderful. Uh, when is the, the award going to be given? Uh, this is normally uh, given in January. In January. January, yeah. Uh, during the January City Council meeting. I see. Now, Sita, explain it, me and the audience why that the, 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 the awardees have to be between 18 years old and 40 years of age. So they're relatively young. Yeah, yeah. Why is the emphasis in that, in the age The group? emphasis for that group was because most of the people who contribute to the society, mm -hmm. who fall in that demographic group, mm -hmm. are not really recognized for their contribution. Oh, I see. So Human Relations Commission wanted to make sure that they are mm -hmm. not left out and they are recognized and honored for their contribution to the society. I see. Now, how... Um, can anyone participate in? Tell yes. us a little bit about the requirements yes. to participate um, in this. Anyone can participate who belong to um, city of Winston-Salem and for their work oh, here. So you have to live um, in the city. Yeah, you have to be um, a resident of city a of Winston-Salem. Okay. And you should have done exemplary work mm -hmm. um, uh, with the vision of uh, Dr. Martin Luther mm -hmm. Kings. And um, they cannot hold any executive position or they cannot be a government elected officer. Other okay. than that, mm -hmm. anyone who fall between 18 to 40 years mm -hmm. and who have done a great job and who has compassion for humanity mm -hmm. can be nominated for this award. The, an individual or an organization can nominate their people mm -hmm. and uh, um, send the application. The application usually comes out, um, I think this time the deadline is December 2nd of mm -hmm. 2016. 
Okay. Um, so you can, the application is made public in mm -hmm. this month. So you can go and download the application and fill it out and send it them. And then uh, we have a committee which goes through the applications and selects the person and they are awarded in uh, January during the council meeting. Now, if someone that's hearing these, these, these broadcasts, if they are interested, do, can you submit your own name in the application or you have to have the, the, the you have to be um, backed up by an organization? You, you can submit your own mm -hmm. and you have to be backed up by an organization because someone has to nominate you. Oh, someone has, has to nominate, to nominate so you. So you cannot nominate yourself? Yourself, yeah. Cannot? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Now, um, so tell us a little bit, how do you go about submitting this application? Do you go online? Do you come here to, to the city? No, you, you how, go how online. You the applications are available online, which are made public mm -hmm. on the website. So you just go, download them, mm -hmm. and fill it, and then send it to across to by email mm -hmm. to city. I and see. Then, uh, all the information of the email is there, so you just have to uh, send the completed application to that email. I see. For those who are listening, uh, Sita, how would, how would you encourage them? to submit an application for, for, for this award and what uh, would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that uh, this is a great opportunity for encouraging people who are doing unselfish work mm -hmm. and going beyond their level to help the people who don't mm -hmm. have good resources or who are facing some race relation problems mm -hmm. and if you have helped someone or if you, if you have seen someone helping those type mm -hmm. of people, I think you should uh, you should nominate those people and it would encourage uh, the young adult people mm -hmm. to do more good for the community and the society. And I think um, as, uh, as it said, like you don't have to do a big, big jobs, but mm -hmm. even a small contribution and uh, many small things can add up to a great job. So Yes, yes. And I think, uh, Sita, uh, in, a, in a society that we live where um, many times celebrities and mm -hmm. s sports athletes yeah. and um, big, 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 I don't know, uh, scientists, entrepreneurs are, are you know, celebrated in, in, in yes. their achievements, and rightly yes. so, yeah. but sometimes these, uh, the, the, as you say, the small deeds yeah. that regular people in our city, they should be highlighted also. Yes. And I think it is an effort yes. for, 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 these, uh, for this yes. award to highlight those uh, small acts of kindness and compassion yes. but as you say if you add them all up yes it they will contribute a, greater to, to, our to our society and to the yeah. beautiful city yeah. of winston-salem that yeah. we all live in and city of winston-salem is a very diverse community so um, i think there are there are a lot of opportunities for people to learn different things and to do a lot of good things here so i would really encourage the people to go out and see there are a lot of opportunities there to do something good, and uh, this is one way to encourage their people right. to do a good job. Right. It could be a snowball effect. Yeah. If we encourage these little acts of kindness and compassion, yes. it could create an even bigger, bigger acts Bigness, of kindness yes. and compassion, yeah. and we all benefit from those. Thank you very much for being with us, Sita. And you heard yeah. it, folks. If you know someone that you believe uh, has done deeds of acts and compassion onto others um, following the teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King. Please nominate them for this award. You will find the forms in, in, online and uh, in January the committee will decide who wins and the award will, 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 will be given. Well thank you again Sita for being with us. Sita Somara is a thank Human Relations know. Commissioner um, and we are going now to Jamie and the Nexus Challenge. Thanks Adolfo. I'm Jamie Waldeck, and this is the Nexus Challenge, where we test your knowledge about fair housing laws. Here's our first question. If a rental home has been burglarized, who is responsible for investigating the matter? Is it A, the landlord, B, the police department, or C, the tenant? The answer is B. Tenants should contact the police if their home has been burglarized. Here's our next question. You live in a rental apartment. If the landlord refuses to repair unsafe maintenance issues in a timely manner, or not at all, what should you do? Should you A, consult an attorney or the Winston-Salem Human Relations Department while continuing to pay rent, B, withhold rent until the repairs are made, or C, withhold rent until you can move out? 
The answer is A. In the state of North Carolina, even if there are incomplete maintenance requests or discrimination issues, a resident cannot withhold rent according to the North Carolina Landlord-Tenant Act. It is best to consult an attorney if there is an issue before withholding any rent monies. And here's our last question. Which of these tenants can a landlord refuse to rent housing? A, a lady with mental illness, B, a black male, C, a Muslim family, or D, none of the above? The answer is D, none of the above. A landlord can be filed with fair housing discrimination by refusing housing to anyone based off disability, national origin, race, sex, religion, or family status. If you feel you have been discriminated against, please contact the City of Winston-Salem Human Relations Department. And that's this month's Nexus Challenge. Now I'm Jamie Waldeck. Now let's go back to Wanda. Thank you, Jamie. Before we go, here's a look at some upcoming events. you enjoyed the program. Thank you for watching Nexus. I'm Wanda Allen-Abraha. See you next time.